All right, folks, we're back with another edition of the Red and White Podcast. I'm Evan, he's Dustin, and we're going bowling. How about that? Yeah, and a good one, too. I mean, we knew where we were going, but I was kind of expecting Shreveport or something like that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. I think I thought we were going to get slapped around a little bit by the bowl community, but going to Charlotte, Belk Bowl, I think that's uh, fantastic for us. What do you think? Yeah, I think the dominoes fell just right. You know, Pitt's a little pissed off, and I understand because <laughs> we were kind of there last year, but we're going to benefit a lot more than Pitt would from going to the Belk Bowl, you know? Right. So. Doesn't Pitt have a good matchup? It's, uh, they're, they have Navy, don't they? Do they? Or no. Where do they end up? We're unprepared, up. as usual, this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They do have Navy. Do they? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a pretty shit bowl. But yeah, I don't want that matchup either. No. Home game and just a, well, I don't know. They're used <laughs> to Georgia Tech, so that could help a little. but Possibly. Uh, Navy's probably better than Georgia Tech. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just mean <laughs> offensively. You know, <laughs> Navy actually yeah. executed the offense this year, but yeah, uh, yeah, I, it worked out. I mean, Belt Bowl's great. Yeah, Belt Bowl's awesome. I think it's, you know, it's perfect for us because you know we're going to sell it out. I, I think I don't know if they announced it already, but I think that's what the rumor's going around, that uh, we've sold our allotment, which is awesome. It's going to be probably a more balanced atmosphere than the ACC championship game when it was 90% Clemson. Yeah. Um, so it's good for us, though. I think it's a, a great matchup. And, you know, being the, you know, if I'm a player, I want to go to like the Bahamas Bowl or something if I'm not going to the playoff. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I think playing Mississippi State is going to be, it's going to set up well for us. They, they can really sell that game, I think. Yeah. Those damn cowbells, though. See, the cowbells drive me crazy. And just because nowhere else lets you have artificial noisemakers and whatnot, I think if the NC State sports marketing was smart, they'd, give out, and I've said this before, Vuvuzelas or Thunder Sticks or something to kind of, you know, just make it obnoxious from both sides. Can we just take in, like, personal air horns? Is that allowed? <laughs> that would be even better. <laughs> just pull it out, like, fourth quarter, so if I get tossed, I don't care, but just <laughs> just wreak havoc when they have the ball. But, yeah, there needs to be something. I mean, it's... Like you said, the crowd might be pretty split, but the noise is going to be a problem. So, yeah, uh, we shouldn't have to have home or, or away game noise for a neutral game. That's that's kind of shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it. I, I just think you know we need to bring the noise as well in in some aspect. I don't know what it's going to be, but see, I feel like it would just end up being like a sad attempt. Half the people would right. do it, and then it would just look kind of pathetic. You know what I mean? Like, oh, how cute. <laughs> They're trying to compete with us, and nobody did it. So I, it's good in theory, but I'm not sure execution would take place. So, so here's a question. Why don't we have cowbells? I mean, everybody yeah, calls should. us the, the cow college, right? We should have cowbells. I'm all for it. Talk to I was, I was all for it years ago. I'm like, I wanted to bring one to our own games. Like, I will paint an awesome cowbell and rock that shit. Didn't we take This Is Our State from them? Yeah, it's the Our State Bowl. <laughs> yeah. So, if we can take their mottos. We can take their cowbells, too. Yeah, why not? I think that would be awesome. <laughs> Everything Mississippi State does, we can do better. So, I mean, yeah. it is Mississippi State. I'm in on that. Yeah. I, I think it's great, though. I think, though, the Belk Bowl... And playing SEC school and playing a high-profile SEC school at that, you know, because they've been pretty good the last few years. They're out the West, well, man. Yeah, well, this... it doesn't make the it doesn't make me feel good about the matchup, but you know, they can recruit it to it. They can, you know, we can do all sorts of things. Hey, look, we're playing the SEC in the bowl game, right? Yeah. We're not going to Shreveport. We're not playing Navy. We're not, you know, doing all these other things. So we didn't have a great year. Had, you know, lost two of our best players. Still playing Mississippi State in the bowl game, right? In a New Year's Eve Eve bowl game, I mean twelve yeah. thirty. That's a that's, that's awesome. a big deal. Yeah, the date yeah. matters a lot, yeah. you know, and especially when it's a game that 
pits two powerhouses from the two powerhouse divisions of conferences in the country. I mean, there's nothing better than the SEC West and the ACC Atlantic, right? <laughs> hey, I'm all for that. <laughs> yeah, we own that. So, uh, yeah, two toughest divisions in football and 12:30 game. Talked about recruiting. That's huge. Having the game in Charlotte, you know. I mean, there's a lot of talent in the Charlotte area, so if we can use that somehow to get to those kids. And hey, why not? Yeah, I mean, I think that's there's a lot of positives to this game, other than the bowl package where they get a belt gift, belt gift card, and a fossil watch. I mean, that's horrible. Yeah, well, they unless it's the new fossil though. Android watch, then that'd be cool. <laughs> But nobody wants a freaking watch. I used to have uh, fossil watches nonstop, and every one of them broke. So that was uh, <laughs> the end of that. I got an Invicta, and it's been fabulous. So yeah, I don't know. I, if I'm getting a watch, I, I'm getting a. I saw a, a lot of the watch. bulls were giving away fossils, though. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what that is. It's been like that for a while. Yeah, it sucks. But like some somebody gets PlayStation fours, and somebody. It's all sorts of crazy stuff. And then somebody gets a watch. And then Shreveport's giving away like Dreamcast because they can't afford it. N64 <laughs> <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> With the expansion pack. It's okay. That's right. So, uh, random question. Looking at the Belt Bowl, we get to go to Charlotte. UNC's going to Orlando for the Russell Athletic Bowl, which is technically a bigger bowl, but would they rather be in Charlotte? So the Russell athletic is the former, what citrus? I believe. I don't know. One of those. I can't keep up. Yeah. I don't know. It's new year's Eve, right? Yeah. yeah. New Year's. Yeah. New year's Eve. Um, I would rather, I mean, you gotta say you would rather play in the bigger bowl game. But for us, it works out better being in Charlotte. I think right. the fans, the you know, recruiting, all that sorts of stuff is going to be better for us being closer to home. Yeah, and I would say that that would be beneficial to Carolina as well. But they couldn't put seats in the stands for or bus in the seats for a championship game. So, yeah, I agree. And I think they out you know typical Carolina way they get lucky with their matchup playing Baylor, who's down to. You know the water boys, their quarterback. Yeah, they was lost three in a row, right? To end this yeah. Season. So yeah, they'll probably end up taking care of business and look amazing. Yeah, but... and then everybody's going to be on their jock again. Yep. For no reason, and then, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they were good. Yeah, we, we could say no reason. They were good this year, but not give them that. They're they were good. They're top fifteen ish team. Yeah. But they're just gonna they're gonna come out looking like heroes playing a beat up Baylor team. Yeah. You get Baylor at full squad and that game, you know, be like seventy to fifty or something. Yeah, plus Carolina's offense is really good and there's no good defense in the Big Twelve. So right. it was automatically set up for shootout. Right. I'm not sure Baylor can hang now. So I watched that Baylor Texas game, which was their last game of the year. And I think I think they're playing a four string wide receiver walk on as their quarterback. <laughs> and they were awful. It was like you know, they, and they, everybody knew they were gonna run it. And they still almost won that game. They were driving down the field with a minute left until that guy fumbled and Texas got the ball and Texas ended up winning. But I mean, all they were doing was running the zone read and the guy was keeping it and running. I mean, it was pathetic. <laughs> They they have no chance to beat Carolina if they're playing like that. Texas handled them, wasn't didn't they? I mean, it was they were handling them. It was twenty to nothing, I think, at halftime. But Texas ended up winning by three. Oh, I, I didn't and, realize it got that close. Yeah, Baylor was getting ready to either score to go up or score to tie, and then the guy fumbled, you know, the twenty five or something like that. Oh wow! Yeah, well, it was nuts. But yeah, Carolina's a little bit better than Texas, so. Yeah. Uh, it won't be good for us. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I think we'll do a bowl preview next week. Yeah, we're working on a special at some point, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and uh, fish that out to people. 
I don't know. We're working on a special episode, a little collaboration, if you will. Mm. Uh, we won't, won't tease it too much until we work out the details, but it should be exciting. So It'll that's a good sweet. one. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do a bowl preview, and I'll actually have to watch some Mississippi State games. Yeah. I, see what they're all the about. The only player that I know is Dak Prescott. So yeah. we're going to do some research before we try and bullshit you. Here's your preliminary <laughs> research. He's good, and he's going to be a problem for us. Yeah, that's probably, <laughs> yeah. Especially in his last game, you know. Yeah. But let's let's get on to some more important topics here. Debbie Yao <laughs> was recently in, uh, had a, I don't know what you want to call this article, and then Sporting News written about her. Why don't you tell us what you think about this? Well, the background, it was, uh, was it like a just a, a meeting among random athletic directors or what? It was like a summit. You know, they do like the industry summits or whatever. So Debbie, if you hadn't heard about this, said something along the lines that speaking of economic frugality among these students' bank account type of thing, that if she sees a student athlete riding around campus on a hoverboard, then they failed them. And then Bill Battle, the AD at Alabama, pipes in and says, or tattoos and rims, which is a lot worse than what Debbie said, since I don't see anything wrong at all with, with what Debbie said. I mean, first of all, the hoverboards are quite dangerous these days because they're randomly exploding and <laughs> yeah, catching that's, fire. That's something. So maybe that's what she was talking about. Yeah, it's dangerous. But uh, yeah. no, she doesn't want them to waste their money. Like every student that you send away to school, if it's your son or daughter, you want them to be financially responsible. Right. And it, the exact quote from her is, you have to teach your student and student athletes about financial literacy. And I think I mean, she's exactly right. So she used an analogy that this writer didn't like, and he just wrote a chop piece about her. I thought that was really, really weird. I think weird. it was a female author, wasn't it? Was it? I, I think. Because they're all yeah. Because Jen she Floyd also Engel. yeah. She called out Debbie for talking about how kids spend their money, but she takes her hundreds of thousands of dollars of salary and pays for Botox and high heels, which is just shady as hell. I mean, that's there's no reason for that. I I didn't yeah. That was it was out of line. It, it was I, I don't even surprise you. The sport news even put that out there. You know, they're basically turned into TMZ, and they, you know, they won't get my, they won't get my clicks anymore. No, not that they, they were anyway. But I don't even think we. They compared her to Donald Trump, basically. And that was part of it too. They tweeted out. She tweeted out an image of Donald Trump sitting on Debbie Yao's shoulder, which I'm like, you're just kind of just out of line there. I mean, I'm not even out of line. It's just off base to the point where it doesn't make any sense. No, she's jumping on the political rhetoric that's going on now and trying to make a story out of nothing. And I just found it just amusing as hell that someone who was writing an article attacking someone's character turned around and went off on Deb for how she spends her money on Botox. I mean, get the hell out of here. Seriously. It, it was terrible. It was a hack piece. Trying to make a story out of nothing. It's all it yes. Yeah, he's got to go to was. You know, go talk to the Alabama athletic director. Why don't you write a piece about him? Yeah, and I mean, I don't understand how he wasn't the main topic because yeah, you know, the brings in. Well, was he being? Was there racism involved when he said tattoos and rims? And I think most of that goes back to the Ohio State deal. I don't think it oh, absolutely was meant as bad as it sounded, but political correctness turned it into that you know and it's just there was no ill will there at all no yeah they were not acting they this was a this was a conversation that was held in public in a you know in an open format they weren't being racist or any of the stuff that people are claiming that it is it was just them they're speaking frankly and i don't i think there was i don't think there's anything wrong with it no all right, Evan, you have a son. So little Moose goes to college. He's on a limited amount of money. Would you want him spending money on something expensive that he didn't need? No, if he bought a $600 hoverboard or $2,000 rims, 
I would not be pissed. as happy with him. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, what are you doing? Exactly. You tell yeah. him he's an idiot that money doesn't grow on trees, and that's all she was saying. But somehow that turned her into this evil fascist. So, whatever. This this woman that wrote this article, I really hope your asshole rots out because you were a bitch. <laughs> I mean, that's just ridiculous. Clickbait bullshit. I'm done with my rant. I apologize for my language. And with that said, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and <laughs> talk a little bit more civil. If there's one thing state fans do well, it's tailgate. And I know for me, the most important part of a tailgate is a Wolfpack cooler. You have to ask yourself two questions. How clean is your cooler and how cold are your drinks? Nobody wants to reach into a dirty cooler and grab a warm beer. Now, I've put rock salt in my coolers for years to try and chill beverages a little bit quicker, but a lot of times I'll either use too little or too much, and I'll have a can filled with slush. I'm also guilty of being a little bit lazy when it comes to cleaning the cooler after I'm finished with it. Then I found Frostbite Cooler Salt. This isn't just salt. It's salt combined with safe and organic ingredients that clean your cooler while it's getting your beer super cold. The really cool part is that it doesn't just clean your cooler, but it cleans everything that goes into it. So when you pull that beer out, it's not just going to be super cold, but the can itself is actually going to be germ-free. And it comes conveniently packaged with the perfect amount to sprinkle over 20 pounds of ice. You can find it in a growing number of stores in the Raleigh area, as well as online if you're outside the Triangle. So check out CoolerSalt.com, that's C-O-O-L-E-R Salt.com to find the closest location to you and see how you can have a clean and cold cooler every time. Frostbite Cooler Salt. Colder, faster, cleaner. Alright folks, we're back. Dustin has cooled off. I think he went outside and <laughs> hit a punching bag or something. Maybe kicked a tree. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about all the coaching changes that are going on, specifically in the ACC. It was uh, been an active week here. Slightly disappointing because I thought there was going to be a lot more chaos with the coaches. But I think the the Coastal looked pretty good. Yeah, um, it was. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to go through the list. It's Virginia Tech. Um, Frank Beamer's out. Justin Fuente from Memphis. He's in. Great hire. Miami, Al Golden's out. Mark Richt, who just got canned from UGA. Great hire. Virginia, Mike London's out. Bronco Mendenhall, which came out of nowhere. I think that was a very good hire from Virginia. They kind of went behind the scenes and snuck that one on everybody. And then Syracuse went out and got uh, Dino Babers from Bowling Green. Now, people probably aren't familiar with Bowling Green, but their offense is legit. And if he can recruit at all to Syracuse... You know, that that makes another another tough matchup for for anybody's got to play him. I, mean, I think he's I think he's an excellent offensive coach. He runs an air raid, doesn't he? Uh, it's yeah, it's more of a spread. Right. I don't think he's uh, full air raid, but I don't even know if anybody is. I think they're all they're all spreads these days. Right. Yeah. But yeah, it, you said it was kind of disappointing. Like it was disappointing from the soap opera days of our lives aspect. Oh, absolutely. Drama. But the Coastal took a huge step. I mean, huge. I think it did. I think it took a huge step in getting relevant. Uh, these these coaches will come in and instantly make those teams better. Yeah. I, I really believe so. I think Fuente's going to have a better offense at Virginia Tech. He keeps Bud Foster, which is amazing. Uh, you know, Virginia Tech gets an A-plus for that. Mark Rick might have a little bit more of a challenge, but he's got talent down in Miami. So I'm not, I, you know, I think they're going to be competitive right away. See, I don't think it's that big of a challenge. I think he can win the Coastal next year. He should have the talent. He he absolutely should. You know, he has a uh, Heisman front runner Brad Kaya and Mark Rick's, <laughs> you know, former quarterback himself. I think he'll do pretty well with that. I mean, you look at it, they fired Al Golden and he was 4-3, and three, and then the interim went 4-1 and one after that. Yeah. So <laughs> the team wasn't bad. They now, just didn't want Al there was the gist of it, yeah, I think. Absolutely. I d I don't think they saw the progress they were looking for. Right. And I think you'll get you'll get that in Mark Rick, and I think he's gonna it'll be interesting to see the whole um 
you know, Mark Rick, Uncle Luke lifestyle going on there. I think we mentioned that last week. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't be more contrasting, but it'll be interesting. I still think within two years he has um, a consistent top ten program. I wouldn't say consistent top ten, but I, I agree with you. I think well, it's not going to be a short time. Level, you know, Georgia has some <laughs> fall off, but. I can. He's going to do better there than Kirby Smart's going to do at Georgia. I'm going to oh, put yeah. that out there. Oh yeah, yeah. The the SEC is just completely obsessed with itself. They're so incestuous. All they're they do just, is hire other SEC coaches. Yeah. They want the next Nick Saban, but there's not one. Yeah, and that's a problem. I can't. I just. I don't know. Maybe it's pulling for state, but I can't imagine firing Mark Richt. No, he did nothing to get fired over. Have you ever been to Athens, Georgia? Do you know what it's like there <laughs> to have to try and convince kids to come live there? And he did. Yeah. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> which is which is the best hire out of the four in the coastal? I'm gonna say Justin Fuente. Fuente. I mean, Mark Ricks is a very good hire, but I think Fuente, just given the given the situation that everybody was probably coming after him and Virginia Tech had to do it while, you know, replacing the only coach they've ever known. You know, and, and they got out in front of everybody. You know, Virginia Tech was the first, one of the first jobs filled and they filled it with the hottest guy in the market. I mean, I think that's a win. See, I think it's I, it's going to sound weird, but I think Bronco Mendenhall. Yeah. I mean, consistent pretty much 10 win seasons at BYU. Yeah, he was within eight to ten wins every year. I mean, yeah, and then uh, there's academic requirements at BYU. There's, and there's religious requirements. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, there's a personal, moral compass type thing there. And right. I think that will translate really well to UVA with the academics, the standards. You know, it's kind of an uppity school. I think he'll do really well there. I, I think he will too. I think it was a great hire. Yeah, I, it was one that nobody saw coming. So I think it's a little surprising, but I, he's going to fit in well. And if he can recruit, which is going to be the, the biggest question, can he recruit in the Tidewater area? Uh, I think he's going to be successful. I know Mike London probably left him with a bunch of talent, so he doesn't really have to recruit right away. I expect Virginia to probably make the biggest gains next year. They could. They very well could. Yeah. What kind of offense does he run? Uh, well, he's run more of a running offense, but it's like more of a running spread. Um, it's it's varied over the years. At one point, BYU was running kind of a, a triple option esque offense, but they were throwing out of it, which is different than most people were doing. But over the years, over recent years, they've been th- running more of a spread, traditional spread. Yeah, I mean those four. That's a. Uh, I mean the coastal. I don't want to throw in Fedora, but you add him. Cutcliffe's a good coach. Paul Johnson. Eh. Who's the weakest coach in the Coastal now? Gosh, I don't know. I mean, you got to feel like Paul Johnson, you know, even with what he's done there, he's going to be he's going to struggle. Yeah. I mean, this year he he had all the pieces everybody thought to just dominate the Coastal and they were a train wreck. Yeah, it's really tough in the current climate of college football to be able to win with a one-dimensional offense. I mean, yeah, where you only run the ball, and you take a deep, you know, you chuck the ball deep once every once in a while, and it's probably not going to go well. Right. The talent's just too good on the defensive side, and people are playing against that offense and enough to kind of have an idea how to shut it down. And I think it's it's going to catch up. It's not going to work in big boy football much longer. Right. I think one of the things <laughs> is that people aren't going to I can notice right away is that state hasn't played Miami in a long time, but guess who's coming to Carver Finley next year? <laughs> Mark Richt in Miami. Yep. So it should be interesting to see. Brad Kaya. Mm. Okay. Maybe I can get his autograph. I hope, but <laughs> we'll make that happen. Yeah, I'm sure we can make that happen. <laughs> It'll be gold one day. So was... yeah, go ahead. No, I was just because I was listening to the USA Today uh, Dan Walkins podcast this morning. And they were talking about their 2016 Heisman contenders, and sure, sure shit, Brad Guy was on the top ten list. I was like, oh my gosh! You know, he might be with Rick there now, if they, if they can turn it around enough. Yeah, 
I mean, I don't. He's got an arm. I'll give him that. He's but. a good quarterback. I just don't get the the hype for him. That's that's all that I. That kind of stands out for me. Everybody's just all over him. <laughs> it's like he hadn't done anything, you know. He's had some numbers, but I think he's been garbage. So, who knows? I think the biggest uh, coaching news has been ECU firing Ruffin McNeil after half of the jobs are filled, after all the dust has settled for the most part, and all of a sudden. Oh, yeah, the guy who's been the most passionate about your school ever, we're going to fire him. He just won 10 games last year, by the way, too. Did you see the deal with the contract stuff? I saw that. So what he's referring to is that apparently ECU offered Ruff McNeil a three-year contract extension, and he didn't sign it because it didn't offer enough for his assistance, which is admirable. And that was you know part of the reason why they fired him. Yeah, because I, it was... The way I understand it, it was offered early in the year. Right. And then he didn't sign it because of the coaching thing. And then they lost a few games, so they just took the offer off the table. Right. Which is pretty sorry. So ECU is in a, in a tough spot here, and their athletic director is in a tough spot here because one hit their place, Ruff McNeil, who by all accounts everybody loved. There's only a few diehard ECU fans that were kind of, you know, they weren't on the Ruff and bandwagon. And I know quite a few ECU friends, and they're kind of, you know, I would say 75% of them wanted Ruffin to, to stay. And I can understand why. He was a nice guy there, but I loved, and he was, wasn't was doing a horrible job. But, you know, now this AD, he's got to he's gotta knock it out of the box. And if he doesn't, the, whoever, he, whoever he hires has got two years, and then they're going to just go crazy. They're just going to be all over, and their pitchforks are going to be hot. They're going to be coming after the AD and the coach. And, and frankly, the names on the list aren't real inspiring. So the, so the current hot names are Virginia Tech. Uh, I guess he's an associate head coach, but he's their quarterbacks coach, Shane Beamer. Obviously, Frank Beamer's son. Um, our offensive coordinator, Matt Canada. Former head coach, Brady Hoke. He was from Michigan. <laughs> and who was he before that? San Diego State or something like that? I don't know. Some small place. He won yeah. there, though. He did win there. And then with Michigan, he was a train wreck. Yeah. Um, and James Madison, head coach, former Carolina coach, Everett Withers. He was a Carolina inter- interim cur- coach, I believe, when who was it, Bunting got canned or yeah, Butch Davis got canned? Uh, Butch Davis, one guess, of those guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he's been doing pretty well at JMU. But these guys aren't the names. The only name, you know, and you've heard the, I'm sure everybody's heard the Gene Chizik rumors. But I don't think there's any basis to that. I think that started on an ECU message board. But now if you're the AD and you hire, you no know, offense to Matt Cannon or Shane Beamer, but you know your fan base is not going to be happy with that, with those names. No. You know, unless they win, you know, and they win early and they win big, which you know, nobody knows because neither one of them has any head coaching experience before. So I, I don't know that. And that AD's, you know, the, the funny thing is that AD has been tabbed as. Debbie's replacement by a lot of people. Like, oh, this is going to be your guy because he worked at State a long time ago. But he's a Todd Turner guy, and I think the old Wolfpack fans will notice, will know what that means. And I don't think he'll have a, I don't think he'll have a shot unless he absolutely crushes this, which I don't, <laughs> doesn't look like he's going to at this point. I mean, the problem here is, you know, they like you said, they fired him after everything else had worked itself out with all the other schools, right? But. You talked about how none of these names are going to make their fans happy. Right. But I'm sorry, it's ECU. You're not going to get a lot of names there that are going to light fires under people. Right. It's the, what what conference are they in? (laughs) They're in the AAC. Yeah, that. I don't even know what that stands for. (laughs) So, looking at the list, Beamer, eh, Canada, eh, Withers and Hope. I think Hoke would be good there. I I think he'd be okay. I I think Everett Withers would probably be the best, just given he knows how to recruit North Carolina. He's you know had he's familiar with it. I I don't know. Hey, Brady Oak had Roseboro coming to Michigan. <laughs> Actually, DJ North Durkin Carolina did. Oh, he's well, now yeah, Maryland. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know. I, I think it's a tough spot for ECU to be in right now, and I don't think they're excited about it. 
you know, you know, Ruffin McNeil lost his quarterback. He lost a bunch of players. And then he lost his starting quarterback with an ACL, I think, before the season started. So he started with nothing this year. So I'm pretty sure everybody was just giving him a pass. But, man, it was – it's weird. And it's been weird that there hasn't been anything coming out about the search until mostly yesterday. Because who wants it, you know? Yeah. They're going to try and get a big name, and they're just not going to jump for it. Right. Like, uh, what's the guy? He was their OC and then went to Oklahoma. Lincoln Riley, yeah, yeah that, I mean, that was all, the name. Oh, yeah, we're going to get him. Hell no. There's no reason for him. He can go right to Power 5 yeah. at this point. He's such a hot name. Even if he stays at Oklahoma, he gets his quarterback back. And, you know, he'll be the mention for the next, I don't know, Texas job or whoever. Somebody, somebody's job is going to be open. It's going to be in the Power 5 next year. Holgerson goes down next year. I could see him right. bolting to West yeah. Virginia. Easy. And he'd win there, too. Yep. So I, it was a pipe dream when that the first thing. Oh well, they must have a deal worked out with Lincoln Riley. No, no, they did not. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh it's gonna be a dumpster fire down there. I I can't say I'm upset about that. No, I think it'd be kind of funny. But... Yeah. They come. They come to Raleigh. We go to Greenville next year. I don't remember. I don't know. One of those. So hopefully it's somebody. Well, I, you know, for the NC State folks who are interested in Matt Canada. I think Canada, by all accounts, is kind of – most people around here are 50-50 on him. They're like, well, you know, we've scored a lot. And we talked about this last week. We've scored a lot, but there's been some questionable things. And, you know, people are going to say the offense cost us the Louisville and Virginia Tech games and quite possibly could have. So I'm not sure how people – I don't think people will be upset if he left. Um, but from what I've heard – and I, who knows if it's reliable or not? Nobody really knows. Matt Canada did interview for the job, but I don't think that went very well. I'm not sure he got a second interview. I think Brady Hoke has gotten a second interview, and I think Everett Weathers got a call back. That's what the rumors are. So looks like Matt Canada will be in Raleigh next year. Yeah. You know, yeah, freshman exactly, quarterback. Exactly. I, I mean, yeah. I, I actually kind of prefer it. Yeah. Uh, Consistency, I guess. Yeah. Because that's the. OC that McClendon's known, you know? Right. So don't mess that up the first year. Let him get a little comfort in the system he's used to and then address it if it needs address next year. But you just never know what you're going to get, right? It could be a lot worse. We could get, I don't know, Noel Mazzoni or something. You know, some, <laughs> one of these guys that just has historically not performed or whatever. It could be, you know, it could be a train wreck. So, Canada's kind of in the middle. I think that's how we everybody feels around here. It's probably better off you keep them unless you know you're you're going to upgrade. Yeah, I put two other jobs that changed down just because I thought they were two of the worst hires in the country, and that's uh, we'll save the the big one for last. But Georgia, I mean, I, I'm not I don't think Kirby Smart's terrible, and he'll he'll do well, but there's no upgrade there. Yeah, there's there's not an upgrade at all. I mean, you fired a guy that consistently won for you to hire a guy who will probably win for you, but you're not going to get titles, you know. I I just don't know what they were what they're expecting there. He Kirby might. Smart. Did he go to Georgia? I think he's a Georgia guy. I think so. So that could explain part of it, and that that and he's baby saving from Georgia, but. Right. I'm just not sure, man. Uh, he's interviewed for some other jobs and didn't get them in previous it, years. It's going to be one of those interesting ones to find out, you know, to watch, see how it goes over. I just don't know what to expect, and nobody knows because he hasn't been a coach before. I don't even know who he got for as an offensive coordinator. I have no clue. Yeah. But that'll be a fun one to watch. And then <laughs> the South Carolina Gamecocks. <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> SEC, they're so incestuous. They don't know anything else. Why would you hire Will Muschamp? You Man. saw what he did to uh, Florida. Uh, and it's what terrible. happened immediately after he left to Florida. Right, they win 10 games. Yeah, I mean, wow. And he's not the personality to go against Dabo in that state. I think you're. he's a great defensive coordinator. And I just don't think he's the right guy to manage my program, right? As a head coach, you have to manage everything. You have to have a great offensive coordinator. You have to have a 
a great defensive coordinator. And I don't think well, my chance that guy is essentially bringing his old staff from Florida back together is what he's trying to do. <laughs> it's I, I don't think it's going to work out. I think he's going to recruit well, and then the defense should be improved. But I just think you're going to see. I don't. It's only been one year. He hasn't learned that much, and he's going to turn it all around. I don't. I don't get it. There's better coaches out there. I mean, go. God, PJ Fleck from Western Michigan, or offer offer Fedora the job. You know, go at him. Any of these guys are better than Muschamp. I just don't understand why they it's only looked internal. They only looked to the SEC. So weird. What about Sonny Dykes? Everybody else wanted him. Right. I, I, he must be a terrible interviewer because I think he interviewed <laughs> for every job out there. He interviewed for Missouri. He supposedly interviewed for USC. He interviewed for us last when we hired Doran, didn't he? He did interview for yeah. us when we hired Dorn, yeah. So Yeah, we talked about it last week. Sonny Dykes and Dorn are essentially the same they have the same record so far. I think Dorn's got a slight slight advantage of him over him. But, you know, Dorn's name's not getting mentioned. I just think it's the the hot the hot name because he can score and he's got a quarterback who's putting up big numbers. Right. And with that said, here's my I have a point I was thinking about earlier today. Completely out of line. But in order for us to be good, and I think it's for any program our size, so basically not Alabama or Ohio State or Texas, you've got to run some sort of spread option. I mean, spread offense. I just I think that's what it is. And yeah, I think you saw that this year. We ran it so much that we weren't successful enough. We weren't throwing it enough. The spread it kind of is kind of the great equalizer. It's just the tempo of the game now, too. Kind of like what yeah. I was talking about with Georgia Tech earlier. Yeah. That's the game has evolved, and that's the one thing that still gives defenses trouble. Even in the NFL, if you if you stand if you sit there and watch on Sunday, like watch the Patriots. They're still running five wide or four wide receivers. You know, I mean, they're spreading it all over the field. It's the same thing as spread, except for Brady's not running it. Stick him back there in a shotgun and let him sling it a little bit and then open up some running holes. Yeah, but they've lost two in a row. That's a bad example. <laughs> All right, whatever. <laughs> but they also have a taste of the state injury bug with no receivers where we had no running backs. So Right. Uh, but, yeah, you're right. I mean, if you've got the quarterback that can do it, that's where the game is now. Yeah, I think that's where you know we're going to have to see that kind of change in our offense over the next – two seasons and then we'll kind of understand where we're, where we're going. I think just trying to be a downhill running team is not going to do it for us. Uh, I disagree. I mean, we've got to run the ball and you got to run downhill, but you know, right now we're running East West and not throwing it at all. I think that's a bad combination. Yeah. I just, I, I think we need to throw more, but we've got, what could potentially be the best running back we've ever had coming in next year. Yeah. Let's let him get on the field first before he, he's, he's <laughs> the truth. Him. He's the truth. <laughs> before we give him any awards, let's get him on the field Maybe first. The keys. He's the truth. Yeah. yeah but potentially I mean, I, what could I know be you're a fantastic player. Yeah. That will look very Elijah Hoodish, but better. I think <laughs> he's faster than hood. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. I think they're built not the same, but I think, Johnny Frazier's faster. Yeah, he's got the burst, but I think I don't know. I think he's a little bit stronger. Yeah. But there there that's something we don't know, but Doran talking about how he's just hulking up basically. Right. So anyway. But yeah, I that's, see what that you're was saying. That's my my mini rant. I, I I basically we need to throw it some more. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we said it all year. The downfield stuff anyway. Yeah. But speaking of throwing it I think the basketball team needs to throw it more in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> we got to score some more, though. They put up 99 against Bucknell. Yeah, yeah. They, it started off slow, though. It did start off very slow. And I wasn't even watching it, and you texted me, and you're like, we can't score against Bucknell? And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, then it picked up, but it turned out all right. Yeah, it picked up. But, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, without Henderson... It's it's gonna be a long year. Cat's got a score, and Cat got two early fouls in this game, and I started to get concerned. But they played pretty well with Caleb uh, running the point. 
but it's not something I want to see all year long. <laughs> He's playing really well, though. He's playing fantastic. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. He shot five and nine from three that game. Yeah. So four. Six. He doesn't have the purest of jumpers, but it, it, it looked. It went in, I guess. Yeah, it's ugly, but it works sometimes. Yeah. So, what we're gonna need to see is more from Maverick, and I think, I think we're gonna get it. Those few early games where he struggled to shoot a little bit, you know, he shot a lot, but he struggled to make them. It's just part of the jitters, I think. And in this game, he blows up. He's twenty-seven points, mm-hmm. nine of fourteen, four from seven, three. I mean, that's what I think we're gonna see from him, and I think that's what we need because we need some help bad. You know, something. I, Really good to take away from this game. We got to the line 35 times. Yeah. And hit 28 of them. So shot 80% on 35 shots from the line. 28 free points. And yep. you can see that from a, a, a scoring 99. That doesn't happen often. So Right. It's going to have to be, I think we talked about it last year, last week too, just driving to the basket. Yeah. And getting to the line and then hitting your free throws and overall... Uh, Abu was five of seven. Cat eight of ten. Caleb hit the only two he took. Freeman four of six. Cody hit four of four. So as a team, they shot the ball really well from the free throw line, and right. that may get us a few extra wins to get us from the CBI to the NIT. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's right. I think you you touched on something there. I think two things we need: we need Cat Barber to play faster. Because you know we've talked about it all year that if he's in the half court set, you know we're struggling because we don't have guys that can really score yet. So he needs to go as fast as he can all the time. And we needed Abu to be more aggressive, and I, I think he was in this game. It's something that Godfrey kept mentioning in his pregame and postgame that the last two games Abu was just, you know, he wasn't, he's not there, and right. they need him to do that because you know everybody loves BJ, but he's not an offensive threat, and that's. Until he gets more aggressive or gets better offensively, you know we need somebody inside who can be aggressive and can score. I mean, I think a booze the biggest and best athlete out there. There's no reason he shouldn't get double double every game. Anya played 21 minutes and didn't take a shot. Yeah, so I mean, people are just gonna eventually they're gonna stop guarding him. Yeah, and so that doesn't work. So you, you need some production from him and and a boo. You need the big guys to, to produce and be aggressive. Yeah, I think they they keep attributing to Abu's kind of gentle nature, but he needs to play aggressive. For him to, he can really dominate. I think he could really dominate if he goes out there and and it's mean. Yeah, plays with the intensity of the Martins playing with. Yeah, obviously the season's not going well, but. There was no plan at all before the season started. I will guarantee you for Maverick to score the most points in a game. But yeah. with injuries and the way everything else is meshing, that's just how it's going. So uh, they're growing. We'll see what they grow into kind of thing. But it's it's going to be a tough year because I think that everybody was counting on Henderson to provide you know, 18, 20 points a game, which he's very capable of doing. And now the latest news that Mark Godfrey said is that Henderson might not be back till the end of January, maybe February. That is not good. No. As deep into league play. How does the schedule and start off? Do you know by any chance? I haven't really looked. Our league schedule? Yeah. Uh, uh, winnable games while he's out. Uh, let me pull it up. I have the non-con schedule. Uh, Virginia Tech, Louisville, Wake, Florida State, Carolina. Those are our first five. Well, that's going to be fun, yeah. Yeah, not so. good. Beat Virginia Tech, lose to Louisville. Probably lose to Wake Forest the way they're playing. Florida State, Florida Carolina State. would be losses. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Wake Forest, <laughs> by the transitive property of basketball, Wake Forest should be number one in the country. <laughs> they just whipped UCLA, who just whipped Kentucky. <laughs> That Wake Forest game, as early as that is, it might decide the season. <laughs> it very we well need could. that game to have a shot, I think. Yeah. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be a long year. We could be wrong and win ten conference games, but I wish I'd uh, never enjoy being more wrong. Yeah. So. 
But anything else? Have you heard anything about uh, Raleigh Atkins? Uh, not a bit. I, from what I read, he's you know he's just enjoying the recruiting process, and it's going to be until uh, January, February ish before we hear really much from him. We need something. I know that. Up, so. <laughs> While we're talking recruiting, it's football recruiting, but Dexter Lawrence, the number two player in the country from Wake Forest, North Carolina, decides on Monday. He's going to announce he's officially visiting us this weekend, which has got to be a good sign. I would think so, yeah. And he's been to Raleigh a lot, but you know Clemson is a heavy hitter. They're coming on hot. It's going to be you know it's hard. They're hard to discount in these situations. Number one team in the country, man. Right. I mean, it's a, that's tough. easy to sell there. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Belt Bowl was really the only good news this week. So, Woo-hoo! Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we will get at you next week. We'll do some homework on Mississippi State and figure out how bad we're going to lose. <laughs> no, nah, I don't want to say that yet. But Is that an early prediction? No, no, I'm not okay. going there. I'm not going okay. there. So, uh, I really, really only know about Dak Prescott. That's it. But Yeah. We'll do some homework and try and uh, figure something out. All right. Thanks for listening. Go Pack. Go